Donald Trump, he is taking the stand in his family's New York civil fraud trial today. Trump is the first U.S. president to testify as a defendant in a court trial in more than 100 years. The former president is accused of inflating his wealth and property values to get favorable loan and insurance terms. The judge in this case already found Trump and others liable for fraud earlier this year. This trial centers on other allegations, including falsifications of business records, conspiracy, and insurance fraud. Before entering the courtroom and the pictures you were just seeing, Mr. Trump denied wrongdoing and took the opportunity to attack the New York Attorney General. She had a response ready even before he opened his mouth. It's a terrible, terrible thing. These are political operatives that I'm going to be dealing with right now. Uh, you have a racist Attorney General who made some terrible statements, and we just see some more that came over the wires today. Uh, it's a very sad situation for our country. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters are the facts and the numbers. And numbers, my friends, don't lie. CBS News Chief Election and Campaign Correspondent Robert Costa joins us now from outside the courthouse in New York City. Uh, Bob, a historic moment. Can you walk us through Trump's testimony so far? It's good to be with both of you. I was inside the courthouse today watching this testimony unfold, and it's clear that former President Trump is very defensive about the valuations of his properties over the years. In fact, he testified under oath repeatedly today that he believes properties like 40 Wall Street here in New York or Doral, his golf course in Florida, or Mar-a-Lago, his estate in Palm Beach, that these are properties that are undervalued, in his view, by his own accountants and his financial statements. The judge in this case, Judge Angoran, however, was visibly frustrated with Trump repeatedly during the course of his testimony, urging Trump's lawyers to get their client, to get the witness in line, to say yes or no, to yes or no questions. And at one point, Judge Angoran warned Trump's legal team that if Trump did not change his conduct in the courtroom in terms of how he answered questions, he would have, quote, negative inferences when it came to the scope of the penalty in this ongoing going civil case. Well, Bob, he might have uh, negative inferences in that courtroom, speaking as a judge, but talking to voters and polling voters, they seem to be inferring other things about the former president, and a lot of them like what they see. In fact, according to a new CBS News poll, uh, former President Trump is, the, is leading President Biden, leading President Biden in the 2024 presidential race if it were to happen today. So the question then becomes, what impact, if at all, will this trial have on those numbers? It, 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 by the looks of it, it's only helping the former president. Well, it could be helping in the sense of consolidating Trump supporters around him, especially if they were having the potential to flirt with other candidates politically in this Republican presidential primary race. At the same time, as you know so well, it's very early in the presidential race. We're a year out. It was a year out on Sunday. Polls can only tell you so much. They're indicative a bit of sometimes where the public sentiment is on certain issues. But at the same time, Trump is facing not just this ongoing civil case, but four other cases that loom over his own revival campaign running for the presidency again, a case in Georgia, criminal case, a criminal case on his handling of classified records, and another one on, on the federal level with the special counsel investigating January 6th. And then there's one, Tony, just down the street here in New York investigating those hush money payments to Stormy Daniels. You know, Bob, those numbers, uh, the, the polling numbers that Tony uh, was just going over reflect what would happen were the election to take place right now and if former President Donald Trump were the candidate against uh, President Joe Biden. Uh, but are any of the cases that you just mentioned potentially disqualifying for the for the former president? That's a great point. There is some hesitation in the Republican ranks about what this would all mean for the Republican Party to have a convicted nominee, to have someone who had actually been convicted by a judge or jury. At this point, it's very possible. This is different than a criminal case because it's a, a judge is making a decision here on a civil level. Trump will certainly appeal the decision whenever it comes down in the coming months. Well, we're at a fluid moment in the presidential cycle. Democrats over the weekend, as these new polling numbers emerged, started to have some more public debate about President Biden's standing, about whether he should be the nominee. And Republicans continue to have some consternation, at least in some quarters, about Trump's ability to win.
Robert Costa flashing some of the insight you can expect during the whole 2024 campaign and flashing some of that swag that CBS is putting out for. I see that jacket. First cold day. That's America right. decides. Campaign 2024. We're already I like putting it. in our requests. Where is mine? Looking <laughs> good. Robert Costa, thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Well, John C. Coffey joins us now. He's a professor at Columbia Law School who specializes in white-collar crime. He's also the director of Columbia University's Center on Corporate Governance. Uh, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we know that the former president clashed with the judge while testifying today, as we just heard from Robert Costa. How important is the testimony to the ultimate outcome of this case? Well, well look at it this way. It's less important what Donald Trump says than how he says it. Mm. If he angers the judge, possibly gets a contempt penalty, or gets the judge to be even sterner in his proposed relief, there's no question that Trump is going to lose this case. The critical question is what will happen on appeal and what will the penalties be? Right now, Judge Ngoran has canceled Trump's certificates of doing business, which would prevent him from practicing business in the state of New York, where most of his assets are located. Uh, but the appellate division has stayed that order. So that's very much uh, for our decision to be re-advised on appeal. However, if Trump were to confuse the process by having a, an ugly upset, and he sometimes does lack self-control, uh, then that could make it much more difficult to overturn this judge's decision. He could be found in contempt as well. Professor, so those are the questions for the future. It's interesting. Professor, I found it fascinating that the judge speaking to Mr. Trump's attorney said uh, repeatedly, apparently, the get control of your client. Is that genuinely the responsibility of, of a lawyer? And then forgive me, all, all my legal knowledge comes from watching TV procedurals, but wouldn't the former president, like all clients, have the right to remain silent? And wh why wouldn't he use that right? Okay. Yeah. You've asked two questions. Yep. It may not be the normal responsibility of a trial lawyer formally, but in practice, he's got to rehearse his client. Mm. And he's got to convince his client to keep his self-control, to remain calm and collected, and not to explode. And Donald Trump does very well in political campaigning when he explodes, but it doesn't work in court. Mm. Now, on your second question, the Fifth Amendment. Donald Trump could take the Fifth Amendment, but he would then lose this case and probably lose the ability to appeal it successfully. The Fifth Amendment, if taken in a civil case, and this is a civil case, entitles the judge to take an adverse inference as oh, to wow. any question Donald Trump does not answer. Thus, if Donald Trump denies something and takes the fifth rather than denying it, excuse me, if he takes the fifth, the judge can take an inference that the prosecution side of the case is correct because Donald Trump has refused to testify and deny it. And that could very much make the record impossible to overturn on appeal. And that affects two critical questions. Can Donald Trump hold on to these businesses or will he be required to sell them? And Donald Trump, uh, whether or not he is going to get a $250 million fine or something lesser, uh, I think this judge, if he's upset, could be re very ready to give what the attorney general is asking, a $250 million fine, which could create something of a liquidity crisis for Mr. Trump. Wow. And John, on what former President Trump uh, does say, does the fact that he's not only a former president, but also somebody who's running for office as the president uh, in 2024, does that impact what he can or can't say on the stand at all? Well, certainly, uh, Donald Trump is under a gag order that he's not supposed to attack the judge's clerk. That's a pretty narrow gag order. This judge normally would be shocked if you criticize the court or the prosecutors. But Donald Trump gets more leeway than most people because it's a political issue in his view. All he's doing is trying to protect the safety of his clerk and granting gag orders against people who might be the object of violence or reprisals. So it's a minimal gag order. He's getting the benefit of the doubt on that. But still, uh, he may violate even that order. And at that point, the judge would be more or less pressured into taking some kind of contempt measure. And so, Professor Coffey, one final simplistic question, but just because I think it's confusing for, for people. The judge has already found Mr. Trump liable for fraud. And everything we're now following is all about the penalty. Do I have that right? 
Basically, I think there are going to be two issues. What's the size of the penalty? There are some other damages that are still at issue that he didn't find on with respect to his initial summary judgment decision before trial. Uh, but those are minor damages. The other question will be whether or not uh, the he and the appellate courts will allow him to withdraw and uh, deny Donald Trump certificates to do business, which means mm. he couldn't operate the major units he owns in New York including 40 Wall Street and the rest. That would put him out of business, and that would really uh, virtually terminate his business empire. He'd have to sell it all up and just hold the proceeds. Professor wow. John Coffey, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Much appreciated.